There are some pretty neat models out there, perfectly designed and ready to print in minutes. But there's one thing that really triggers my inner monk. A lot of them come with an imprinted logo. I get it, you've spent many hours designing so you want to add your personal signature and that's absolutely fine. Sometimes there's a second model without the logo and if so, that's my go-to. If not, I remove the logo myself in the slicer, which is usually pretty easy. Like with this Hanson Razer travel case that I downloaded. Sorry Roger Quinn, but the logo had to go. Welcome back factory owners! Today I'm showing you how you can modify an existing design to remove imprinted logos and even add your own. Everything I show in Prusa Slicer should theoretically be possible in Orca Slicer, but there were a few things I couldn't figure out, like how you can switch from world coordinates to object coordinates. The dialogue in Orca is missing the drop-down box in Prusa Slicer shows. If you know way, please let me know in the comments. So let's start with the most simple variant, removing a logo facing the build plate. At first I'm just going to eyeball everything. I will later show you how you can figure out the exact measurements if you want to go down that route. With the model in question already loaded and placed on the build plate, you need to right-click the model either in the list or directly in 3D and select the Add Part menu. If the logo is circular, you can select the cylinder option. Otherwise you need either the box or the slab. It doesn't really matter since the only difference is the initial dimensions of the part. I go with slab since I really like how it sounds. Slab. The next thing we need to do is resize the newly added object. Be sure that you only select the new part, otherwise you will resize the actual part as well. I recommend getting the size in X and Y direction straight first. For that you can make the part fairly big in the Z direction for now, so it's easier to see if you already covered the whole logo. The only thing crucial is that you don't impact the geometry of the part you're modifying. For delicate parts that means a bit more fiddling around. If the model you're editing is chunky anyway, it doesn't matter if your added part is a fair bit bigger than the logo. Now it's time to adjust the height, aka the Z dimension of the part. First thing I'll do is use the drop to bed option. If the button is not visible, your part is either already flat on the bed or you need to move it up a bit. You then just go back and forth between making the added part thinner and dropping it to the bed until it fully fuses with the base part. If there is hidden geometry behind the logo you can't initially see, make sure you double check if everything is still as intended after slicing. In that case you might want to use the approach where I'm measuring things, I'll show you in a second. One helpful trick is that you can now export that model's geometry as a whole with the logo gone. That way you don't have to worry about accidentally moving the part covering the logo. It also makes adding your own logo easier since you only have to worry about one thing at a time. You just need to right click the model's top entry from the list and select export STL. You can then import it as one object at any time. Let's see how we can determine the necessary Z dimension way easier. With the added object out of the way, we zoom in and use the measurement tool. We then select the imprinted part of the logo and the part's base which touches the build plate. As you can see, we are now told the exact height. This is the value you need to set as Z dimension. There's no need to add extra margin, but it also doesn't hurt. Move the added part back over the logo and after slicing you see there are no gaps. As before, you can then export it as one file if you want. The Razer travel case I mentioned in the beginning is a bit more complicated, but not much. Its main difference is that it's printed standing up and also has some added feet. So the logo is not facing the build plate directly. But don't worry, we'll make it work with just a few extra steps. First I place the object with the logo facing the build plate. It doesn't matter that it's not printable in this orientation, this is just to make positioning the added object easier. We also want the model to be perpendicular to the build plate. Alternatively, we could also rotate the added part, it doesn't really matter. Again we need to add an object and resize it to match the logo size as we did before. The additional step is then to set the height of the added object. To get the approximate size we take two measurements. The first one being the depth of the logo and in my case that was 0.2 mm. The second one is the distance of the logo from the bottom, for that I need to measure it against the part of the object touching the build plate, in my case the feet. With those two numbers I know how tall the added object needs to be and I can calculate the height I need to put in. It's important to note that the position is calculated from the center, meaning I need to add half of the object's height to the Z position. So 0.2 millimeters divided by 2 
plus 0.4 mm equals 0.5 mm. After this initial setup, we can put the part back in its original orientation and do the final checks. The position of the added object is automatically translated to stay in the same place in relation to the print model. Since this is just an approximation, it might be necessary to further adjust the size a tiny bit in order to make the logo disappear completely. If the logo is still shining through a bit, try to move it added object a bit below the surface. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but give it a try. Don't forget to use part coordinates instead of world coordinates. For logos that are sticking out rather than being imprinted, there are two approaches. The easiest is to just use the cutting tool and remove the logo. But it only works if the logo sticks out farther than any other geometry. We only want to keep the part, so make sure you select the right object as the cut result and that's already it. If you can't just cut away the whole top for any reason, you can use the same approach as before but with a negative volume. Instead of filling holes, this will prevent existing geometry from being printed. It blocks only specific geometry without negatively impacting the rest of the model. As before, it's usually the easiest approach to place the part with the logo facing the build plate. So far we used simple shapes that are already integrated into the slicer, but what if we need a more complex shape or even want to add our own logo? There are two ways to achieve this. The simple and straightforward one is to load an existing model. You can use any STL here. Crucial Slicer even comes with a gallery containing a few things like recycling markers already and you can add your own for quick future use. If you don't have a model and don't know how to make one yourself, you should check out my Fusion 360 course with the link in the description. But for now you can also directly import SVG files for those of you who can wrap around the head using Inkscape. I can't. Seriously, I even do the SVGs for my laser cutter in Fusion. Let's say you're about to print a storage container for the plutonium fuel of your flux capacitor, but none of the designs you found online came with the appropriate warning signs. No problem, you just select Add Part from the context menu and use the SVG option. Notice in this case it doesn't matter if you use Add Part or Negative Volume, since the SVG dialog has an option to select if you want to join or cut geometry from our part. For directly imported STLs it does matter, or if you accidentally use the load option for the SVG, which also works but doesn't show the SVG dialog. With the dialog open you can drag around the shape and you'll see a crosshair. This is used to select the surface with which the SVG is aligned. After the dialog is closed you can then move it to any desired location without it changing its orientation. You can also click face the camera to get any orientation you want. But we don't need that for adding a logo, we just need a flat surface and that's it. Additionally, you can set the size and the depth from the dialog or you can do it the old fashioned way later on like with any other object. One thing you absolutely need to set here is the operation. This basically decides if the object becomes an added part, negative volume or a modifier. That's why I said it doesn't matter from which menu you load the SVG. There's also an option called Use Surface, which might seem confusing, but is actually pretty simple. It projects the SVG perpendicularly onto the existing object, and wherever that projection touches the existing part, the SVG is allowed to stay. The rest is simply cut off. That allows you to make really bizarre shapes. But I digress, this doesn't matter for our logo. After setting those few options, we're already good to go. I usually use the Cut option and put the logo on the build plate. Feel free to do a join operation for having the logo stick out if that's your cup of tea. Simple as that you can add your own logo to any model and keep the environment safe. One quick little bonus tip, there's also an option to add plain text which follows the same principles as the SVG. So if you just need to add a name or something, you don't need to draw an SVG or create a model. Just keep in mind that the text needs to be large and simple enough to be printed. I usually go with Arial Black. Anyway, I hope you liked the video and if you want to see more, you can subscribe over here and watch another one over there. See you in the next one. For those of you, for those of you, for those of you, you can, for those of you,